yeah. Anyway, hey everybody, this is uh, Retro Care Trigger Reviews, and happy Easter in advance for everyone uh, who uh, does that all along with me, like every other semi-Catholic <laughs> YouTube was. Uh, my actual heritage aside, uh, this is an editorial, hence why I'm not in my full gear, hence why I'm not real nerf uh, Red Hood for this particular subject. Uh, before we get to that, um, good news for Godzilla vs. Uh, King Kong fans, it is actually making a lot of bank. Uh, Pandemic-wise, I think it's got like 10 million opening. It might get 40 by the end of the week, uh, God willing. If so, that means it's actually a commercial success despite the pandemic. And again, same thing, like I've mentioned in the re review, uh, previous video, if you want to see that uh, above. It looks good. It looks uh, the, the projections look good. I don't know on uh, HBO Max's subscription rates, but that's near near the, neither here or there. So that all being said, uh, this uh, editorial. Uh, vlog I wish had time to become a video essay uh, is gonna be uh, what to do after Snyder Cut. What's next? Uh, what would be the next fan campaign that'll make WB or XYZ of any other uh, studio bow to you to basically make your movie, you know, or go to the creator's vision forever? Um, long story short, Director's cuts have always been a thing. Like, I remembered, uh, like, the Blade Runner franchise. I'm not really much of a franchise at this point since, you know, uh, that 2049. Uh, or, oh, I forgot the name of that movie, too. I think I need to review that also. Anyway, maybe I did. Long story short, uh, Director's cuts have always been a thing. In DC's case, probably more so than ever. Again, like, with Blade Runner and even the Richard Donner cut years ago with uh, Superman. So, I think there is a chance you can technically help out someone that has been basically been waiting 25 years to be a director's cut to a late director that is no longer with us. I am talking, of course, the video essay that High Top Films did uh, a few weeks back that has spit aside, <laughs> has taken me about a good month and a half to rewatch, rediscuss, re and redecipher uh, why uh, he wants to do this. So, card to the uh, video essay itself. Uh, Batman Forever. To make a long story short, when it comes to the Schumacher slash Tim Burton era, it was divided. Like, some people wanted the, the Tim Burton movies because it was dark, it was right, it was reinvigorated him in the comics because he was always lighthearted because everyone was nostalgic for the 60s Batman at the time. And people who were used to Schumacher, like I was back in 95, uh, was just used to them trying to catch up to the animated series, which is what I thought of when I was like, I don't know, eight or nine when these movies were coming out. My bad. Um, other than that, um, there's a reason why it took me about oh, a good month and a half to finally get this video out. Uh, a couple things. Uh, everyone who has been complaining and review bombing said Godzilla vs. King Kong. Why? Honestly. To basically get their Snyderverse back. And all I can say in that particular topic is shut up and just ask for, you know, DC Comics to just make your universe in the Black Label line and be done with it. I'm just saying. That's my two cents of that. But if you still are here to see my pitch for uh, Restore the Schumacher Cut for uh, Batman Forever, honestly speaking, I did a review, so go to my Bat Month uh, playlist for that. Um, it's the only one, I think, uh, soundtrack-wise, I kind of risked it with uh, Seal's Kiss by the Rose. So give that video and this one a like for how far I'm willing to go to just defend a weird movie like this. So, when it comes to Schumacher's Batman movies, Forever is the least crazy that everyone has told you over the years, myself included, when I did the review. Same thing here, except, turns out, uh, High Top uh, actually had history with someone that worked with Schumacher. I'm not kidding. I I'm fast-forwarding and spoiling, I guess, like, the end of his video essay. But, um, I'm extremely jealous of the kid. I'm gonna be honest with you. He, he pulled it off. His editing was, like, damn near perfect. And honestly, it makes me want to get a new editing software for future video essays like I've been wanting to do all along when it comes to Retro Editorials. That being said, um, it's good. Like, it's a good video. It does g give you a good counterpoint. And people have also made video essays about um, Schumacher over the years. Uh, Lindsay Ellis, years ago, when he was doing The Phantom of the Opera. No joke, cards of that. Um, also, uh... Patrick X. Williams also did the same thing, trying to defend the Schumacher movies before his passing. And, yeah, I'm kind of bearing the lead here. Uh, apparently, um, God, I forgot the kid's name, uh, Hightop, 
went to uh, a film school in uh, his home state, Pennsylvania, and apparently has the same creative that worked with uh, Joel Schumacher for St. Elmo's Fire. And if my mom is watching this right now, hi, this is your favorite son telling you that Schumacher made one of your favorite 80s movies that you liked with Dad. That is a personal story I don't say lightly, by the way. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it turns out he worked with him, and because of his connection with Joel is why he's so far so good, looking great in the video essay game, and to that, I thank you for that. So, because this video has now turned into more of a recommendation for the for the essay itself, I highly recommend watching it, and I highly recommend everyone campaigning to release that director's cut, mainly because that is worth your time and investment instead of just hoping and praying that uh, the Snyderverse is going to be a thing again. They canceled the trench, for God's sake. They trenched your, your, your weird spin-offs you're going to get. The only thing that isn't canceled Snyderverse-wise is the Flash sequel that now uh, has a uh, Supergirl that they casted. Card to that emotional video of her getting the getting the, uh, getting the gig, because good for her, and I hope she branches off into her own series. Um, I don't want to say it's going to be better than the CW version, because the CW version has gone through a lot of leaps and changes, and I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. All she needs to do is do the bare minimum better than Cavill's. Uh, Superman, which, by the way, I forgot to mention in my, uh, Snyder Cut review, turns out, ja uh, not Josh, uh, Zach knew he should have had the freeze breath all along and mitigate damage and didn't want to do it, so, the fuck? Anyway, also, uh, if there's no time in the cards, I also want to make this video also counterporting whatever the hell Mylar was saying in his two-hour cut, uh, two-hour video essay ex trying to defend the Joss Whedon, uh, version. Yes, that is happening. <laughs> Yes, uh, video down below if you want to see it. Um, you can laugh at him all you want in the comments because everyone around him that usually clowned on um, Snyder over the years kind of jumped ship when the Snyder Cup became a reality all four hours and two minutes of it. So um, he is literally alone in a sinking ship. That's my discourse on that aside. So with that all being said, hope you like this quick editorial of how I feel for YouTube channels going forward after the Snyder Cut. I feel like... Like I said, like, uh, high top, you should try to, like, support, try to watch all the deleted scenes that are actually out in, like, the deleted scripts. I even think the novelization is still a thing somewhere that you could purchase on Amazon. I don't know. So, no buy link for that. I, again, I'm just assuming. Again, if not, please let me know that I got that wrong in the comments. Again, I'm, I'm hoping for the dislike one. Now that I've been dreading it for years... But now, because they want to, now YouTube wants to get rid of it, I was like, please bring it in. No, 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 show the analytics wrong. Like, okay, I can handle the discourse. I can handle some criticism. Stuff aside, it's, the campaign's worth a try. You got Snyder Cut, what do you got to lose? Honestly, at this point. So, lambastically, you, pitching aside, I uh, hope you like this video. And, of course, finally, kind of go to my Godzilla vs. Kong review over here. Uh, previous video here, which I think was my Invisible review. Already mispronounced whatever it was after... Oh, uh, Laura losing her mind. Um, getting uh, back from the vault uh, in uh, X News uh, shirt here uh, to sub the channel. Uh, hit the notification down below for more original editorials. Uh, like this video, like I said earlier, for the campaign. And like this video uh, for how far I've come vlogging-wise. Because that... I, I still gotta get something for that lighting. Uh, pay, uh, pacing aside, uh, I'm Richard Gary with Gary Reviews. Uh, wishing everybody a happy Easter as it does the recording, and hopefully a really well overdue uh, director's cut for the late Joel Schumacher. So that all being said, I think I'll go get drive through.